Hey folks, how's it going? So if this is our first time meeting and you haven't seen me before, then nice to meet you. My name is Jay. On this channel, we do a lot of speaker reviews, amplifier reviews, hi-fi, and music is our passion. So if this is something you're interested in, if you share a similar type of passion for audio and music, then please do consider subscribing and also liking the video. Now, if you do like the video, it does help us out a significant amount. So I appreciate that you like the videos. Now, if you have seen me before and this is not your first time seeing me, then thank you for being here. Thank you for being a supporter and thank you for being a subscriber. Now, today we're going to be talking about a very special amplifier. It's called the Grand Note Shinai. Now, this is a fairly expensive integrated amplifier right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, but it is also a very interesting and a high, um, high end type of integrated amplifier. So, it's about 11,400 euros, I believe. The exact pricing, including the Canadian pricing and the US pricing will be in the description below. So make sure to check it out. And so if, if the pricing is a turn off to you, then please consider clicking away right now. Um, I've just saved you 30 minutes. But if you are interested in knowing what's out there, even though you can't afford it, just like me, then please do consider staying because it is a very interesting integrated amplifier. Now that we have that out of the way, um, let's get down to it. Now the Grand Note Shinai is interesting because it's a true dual mono design and it uses true tube circuitry. In fact, there are so many things to talk about in this integrated amplifier that I don't know if I can fit it on this video. So if I miss anything, I will be writing it down in my written review. So please check my written review in the description as well. Now, before we get actually into the design, um, you already know it's a dual mono. It uses true tube circuitry, despite the fact that it's a solid state amplifier. Now, before going further and explaining what this integrated amplifier is all about in terms of sound, its technologies and stuff like that, um, we have to talk about the engineer. Now, the engineer and the CEO of, um, CEO of Grand Note is Max and he has a very long Italian name, but as you can probably tell, I'm not Italian, so I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce it. Now, a lot of his friends, including myself, call him Max. He's a very nice guy. Um, I've met him a few times in real life. And, um, you know, you can actually read about how I got to know about this brand in the description below, uh, in the written review. Now, he has been designing tube amplifiers, and he's a tube lover, just like, me and a lot of the guys out there who loves the organic, the um, natural sound of tube amplifiers. And he thought to himself, well, but some tube amplifiers and you know, even some of the good ones are not totally perfect. The mid range and the high frequency is very nice, but the bass seems to be lacking in a lot of them. Now he came to a conclusion that, well, what makes a tube amplifier sound the way it does? What makes it so natural? What makes that tube sound? And so he decided to um, do his research and he found that you know it was a tube circuitry, not so much the tube itself, but the tube circuitry. So he decided to use a true tube circuitry for his solid state amplifier. And he coined it the magnetosolid technology. Now, I don't even know if I'm, not, I'm pronouncing that right because I'm really bad with pronunciation as you, guys, I, as you guys probably know guys, right? So give me a break here. And so this is a solid state class A, 37 watts I believe. And it's a true class A, dual mono. Dual mono meaning that it's basically a mono block but in one chassis. It is completely isolated. The left channel and the right channel has its own power supply. Heck, it even has its own power cords. So you have to use two power cords, one for the left and one for the right. Um, it has inputs, but it doesn't have outputs because this is a integrated amplifier that is for preamplifier and amplifier. And I can't imagine someone wanting to use this just as a preamplifier given the price and given the performance. And you can use a remote control to increase the volume or decrease the volume. And it goes all the way up to 35, I believe. So even though it's 37 watts, it's 35 
volume steps. And these are very, very powerful. Um, this is a very powerful amplifier. Despite the 37 watts, don't let it deceive you. It is an incredibly powerful amplifier. In fact, we have a lot of speakers coming in here. Um, behind the scenes, we have about like a dozen speakers that just came in and we have more coming and some are very efficient, some are not so efficient. Some are just, you know, just around the ballpark of, you know, being inefficient. And so we paired it up with the Grand Note, every single one of them. And that's partially why this review took so long because I wanted to try with many different speakers, including the very high priced uh, speakers like Smos Faber, PNW, uh, Focal, um, what else did I try? Uh, monitor audio. Um, I tried practically very, very high end um, speakers to very, very affordable, very renowned um, speaker brands like Bocard S400, Bocard Audio, um, Tectons, uh, Klipsch, Elac. Um, practically tried it with many, many speakers. Like, never, like, I, I never did this before, but I needed to because I wanted to get a full, full understanding of what it was capable of. And let me just tell you that none of none of the pairings ran out of juice. The Grand Note had plenty of power, uh, plenty of headroom. And in fact, most of the time, I didn't even need to go past 12 out of 35. Um, in very rare cases, I would have to crank up to 17 or 18. And that was pretty loud. Like um, even for inefficient speakers, I never had to go to 20. So yes, it is a very powerful amplifier um, to note. Now I mentioned how it has a two uh, toroidal transformers on each side for its outputs. Now it also has two toroidal transformers for its inputs. So in total, you have four toroidal transformers. And this toroidal transformer, this is the, the output transformer is the heart of this integrated amplifier. Um, this design is a true tube circuitry, like I mentioned. So it is the idea that, you know, tubes, uh, you need an output transformer to match the impedance of high tube impedance to a low uh, speaker impedance. So you're, tr you're trying to match the impedance there. Uh, that's what the output transformers are for. And I've mentioned many, many times how for tube amplifiers, the output transformer is the heart, the core, of sound quality, you know, that needs to be quality. And I've mentioned this in my previous tube integrated amplifier reviews, and it stands true here. Now, the purpose is a little bit different. The purpose here is, you know, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. It is not trying to match the impedance because it's a solid state device. So meaning that it doesn't have any tubes, which means that you don't need to match any, any type of impedance uh, per se, you know, uh, not as drastic as, you know, the tubes. So it's used here for sound quality purposes. Now, when you turn on the amplifier, it goes one, two, three, and then counts up to 100 for its warm up time. Now, I didn't find this to be a nuance at all. In fact, I actually kind of enjoyed looking at the numbers go up, but maybe that's just because I'm insane. But maybe who knows? Maybe it's a caveat for you. Maybe it's a deal breaker for you, but it does do that. Now, the toroidal transformers that I've mentioned is actually its own design meaning Grand Note designs them themselves, Max designs it himself. So this is not like the off the shelf, um, you know, Toyota Transformer from China. Um, it is actually manufactured with the highest quality parts, highest quality control, uh, the tightest regulations possible from Grand Note and Max himself. And in fact, Max has never used, from my understanding, has never used third party um, transformers. Being an engineer and uh, his background being an engineer, he has always designed output transformers and you know transformers in general um, by himself. Never used off-the-shelf third parties. So there you go. So those are quite expensive to manufacture from my understanding. So without a doubt, you're getting a very high quality Toyota transformer and also just a pure, you know, lovely circuitry that's tubes based. That's all great. But how does that translate into sound? I mean, I get it. It's a tube circuitry used in a solid state amplifier. That is very unique. However, it's not the first time where a solid state device wanted to sound like a tube amplifier. In fact, we've saw we've seen, you know, the this in a story of Bob Bob Carver versus Stereophile. 
Um, in fact, we've seen many engineers attempt this where they try to make a solid state um, amplifier sound like a tube. And some have succeeded, some have failed. Bob Carver certainly have succeeded. But what's different here? What is the story? Well, the story is that basically this is a new technology. This is not something that is, no, it's not so much that solid state is wanting to be a tube amplifier. It just so happens to be that when you marry a tube circuitry to a solid state, you come up with something entirely different. Would I call this a hybrid? I don't know. It is not 100% hybrid either. It is magnetoid. And that's what I would say. It's a new technology. It's a new type of amplifier, in my opinion, at least the way I see it. And the sound quality speaks for itself in that regard. Now, in some regards, it is very tube-like. And it is exactly what I hope for. In some regards, it is just mind boggling. So when I first heard this amplifier back in Montreal show, um, I was mind blown because the mid range was just beautiful, much like tube like and I was allured and I was I was drawn to the sound and hence I'm here now reviewing it. Um, and even when I brought it to my home to review it, it was the same thing. The mid-range was just absolutely holographic, beautiful, uh, one of the best tube mid-range I've ever heard. And the flow, everything was just almost incredible. The only thing is this. With certain tube amplifiers, like I've mentioned to many of my clients and many of my friends and many of the people watching my videos, with tube is a trade-off with solid states in the fact that it may be holographic, but you're not gonna be able to pinpoint each instrument. Not, not everything is going to be spotlit and not everything is going to be thrown at you the same way a solid state amplifier will throw it at you, especially in the mid range. So for example, if I play uh, Feel So Good by Chuck Mangione, um, I'm not gonna hear instruments the same way I would hear when I'm listening to it with a tube amplifier versus a solid state amplifier. Because tube amplifiers, you're gonna get like this holographic sound, um, music is gonna sound natural, it's gonna be surrounding you, and it's gonna be warm, um, luscious, beautiful mid-range tonality. But the solid state is going to be better in the fact that it is going to be able to pinpoint where the instruments are coming from, where the voices are coming from. It's going to be more precise. Now the grand note is interesting because it does a bit of both. And what I mean by this is that it is holographic and it's almost like, wow, it's too soft. It's going to, it's too holographic to sound so precise. But then within that holographic sound stage and holographic 3D like presentation and you know warmth, what you get is a pinpoint instrumental separation and imaging. And that is going to be the main factor here into why I think this integrated amplifier is really onto something, why I believe this technology is really onto something. It is very spotlit even in that holographic sound stage. And I've seen very few amplifiers, if any, do that to that kind of perfection. And then when you get into the high frequency, the high frequency is just sweet, just sweet enough with most speakers. Now, if you do pair it up with more brighter speakers, let's say the Focals or higher end Focals or Klipsch, at least for me, it was a little bit tad too bright, tad too sparkly, but some people like that. It is not too much in your face. In fact, with the grand note, what I found was that it pulls the soundstage back a little bit so that the soundstage and, and the imaging is in between the speakers and a little bit behind the speakers in some cases. While paired with other amplifiers, you would find the speakers to have a sound stage and imaging a little bit front um, in comparison. Now, in terms of the bass region, um, the bass region is not woolly at all. In fact, it is incredibly tight, incredibly impactful. And what I appreciate about the Grand Note is that it doesn't over exaggerate the mid range, uh, sorry, the mid bass. So in some cases with integrated amplifiers that so-called hybrid, um, you know, trying to be tube-like, they emphasize that mid bass energy. And I'm not a total fan of that. In some cases, I appreciate it. But the reason they do that is because they want to add a little bit more warmth. After all, it's a hybrid. It's supposed to sound a little bit more tube-like. So they're trying really hard to sound more tubey, hence they add that mid bass, 
With the grand note, you're not gonna find that at all. In fact, you're gonna find very clean mid bass. You're gonna find it very punchy, and you're gonna find subtle bass responses that's going down really deep. So when you pair your speakers with this amplifier, what you're gonna find is that you're gonna find the bass to go down lower. Um, in fact, I wouldn't say it's making the speakers go down lower, it's just a being able to translate and tell the speakers um, to go down lower. So it is able to do that in such a fashion where you hear the low rumble of the bass region and a very clean mid-bass presentation instead of a mid-bass bloat or a mid-bass energy that is just over excessive. Well, you may be asking, well, how does the bass compare to actual solid state amplifiers and similar to its price range? For example, Dan D'Agostino, for example, um, which is a little bit more pricier um, amplifier, monoblocks, you know, like the momentum um, or the progression line. Uh, well, the bass is actually quite similar. In regards to that, the Grand Note has enough balls, enough tightness, and enough authority in the bass to re replicate almost any type of music. In fact, one of the tracks that I tried was called Hot Spade, and this track has a lot of bass, a lot of synthetic bass. But a lot of speakers, in fact, a lot of amplifiers struggle to replicate this actual track because it has a lot of low bass, it has a lot of authority, a lot of, it needs a lot of control for its actual reproduction of what it was uh, mastered and mixed into. And the Grand Note does it perfectly. Uh, when paired up with the right, uh, right speaker, it does it to absolute, um, you know, highest pedigree. So that is what you're gonna get with the Grand Note Shinai. Sounds very, very good, right? Is there any caveat? I couldn't find one. And that's why this review took so long. I found that most amplifiers, if not all, have some type of compromise, has some type of caveat uh, in terms of its sound capabilities and pairings. I didn't find any of the pairings to be a mismatch in any case. In, in any case, I would pair it with one speaker and I would be like, wow, that's perfect synergy right there. And I would pair it to another speaker and I'll be like, wow, that's the perfect synergy right there. Um, but what I do want to say is that with more efficient speakers like Tecton, Klipsch, JBL, Synthesis, um, and a lot of the more, more efficient speakers out there, um, even TriArt, for example, has been a whole a lot of enjoyment. In fact, I think it's the best pairing when you pair efficient speakers to these uh, Grand Note integrated amplifiers. But by no means. Other speakers like Vocal, um, Monitor Audio, ELAC and all these speakers still sounded very, very excellent with this integrated amplifier. Even Solon's Fiber and BMW, uh, Wilson Audio. Now you may be asking, well, Jay, you haven't really reviewed expensive integrated amplifiers. And that's absolutely correct. I haven't reviewed a lot of integrated amplifiers or amplifiers in this type of price range. I've done few, but not too many. But that's on this channel. On other channels, I've done reviews that are very much expensive. Um, as some of you may know, I work in the high-end retail industry, and so I have very much a very good access to a lot of the brands out there, and one of them being Macintosh, and other being PS Audio, and all these integrated amplifier, all, the, all these great amplifiers. Um, but one thing that I do want to mention is that, at least to me, I really like the Grand Note even more than. Uh, some of the Macintosh. And that's a big statement from me because I really like Macintosh. Um, as you know, I'm a big fan of Macintosh, but Grand Note just may, just may have made, an, made another fan because I really, really like this integrated amplifier. Um, in most cases, I prefer the Grand Note over the Macintosh. Now, I do want to make a comparison here, and this may be a long video because I'm making this comparison, but I think it's worthwhile. So. I usually say the resolution changes when you go into this type of amplifier versus the $3,000, $5,000 ones. Um, and you may be asking, well, what does that mean? What do you mean by resolution? And so I'm gonna attempt to explain it the best way I can, and that's through cameras. So when you see cameras, and because I'm a camera guy, um, you have consumer level Canon cameras, for example, like the M50 or the Canon SL2, uh, you have the beginner cameras, which is really good, best bang for the buck type of camera. You hold it, you point it, you shoot it. That's why point, to, point and shoot cameras were made. 
And so, you know, you have those type of cameras. Then why would you go to higher end ones? I mean, those look amazing. Why would you buy a $5,000 camera like the one I'm using right now? Or why would you buy a $20,000 pro camera? Well, the idea is that you want a sharper image and you want a more natural presentation within that sharper image. You're not just getting it for the sharpest image possible because if it looks too sharp, it looks unnatural. It has to be a right balance between sharpness, the color, um, the naturalness, and all these things. And of course, for the most part, most people are happy with their entry-level cameras. They do what they do, they love it. But for some people like us who love to film, who loves to see sharper image qualities, who love to, um, you know, mingle with these things, to them it's worth $20,000, to them it's worth $5,000, and to them it is worth that extra sharpness um, and extra color ratio and contrast and all that stuff. And, you know, they choose a specific brand, for example, like Canon, because they have their own um, d digital chips and, you know, devices that make what Canon is about. And so it's the similar idea here. Grandinote has its own patented design. It has its own technology. It has its own type of sound and characteristics that many people will love. And here I think is a very good point to make that when the resolution change, it's not just one thing changing. It's not like the base gets better or the highs gets better. It's everything. Everything scales up. Now, of course, is there a dimin diminishing return? Yes, there is but you have to realize that that's the same thing with cameras. And right here in audio, I think there's more of a difference than in cameras. Um, and that's a big statement to make because a lot of people that love cameras is going to hate me for saying that because they see a big difference. Um, a lot of people, if you go to like, you know, Canon EOS R versus like, you know, Sony and stuff, you see it side by side, it's small differences. Um, but people choose their cameras over it. They spend a grand or even more on cameras that just looks a tad bit better to their eyes. Anyways, this video has gone for too long and I appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate um, your viewership and I'll see you guys in the next one.